Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here. Good day to you. Hey, in this uh, quick NAS uh, session, what we're going to do is we're going to expand that uh, Synology DS1621 Plus. Uh, as you, if you remember this particular unit, we had two disks in it. We had this disk right here, which was about 160 gig disk, and the second disk was a about uh, maybe a three terabyte disk, give or take, somewhere in that range, right? And we set this up as a RAID one on purpose, and we kind of demonstrated that even though the smaller disk was there, it would always be the smaller RAID size, uh, and we could expand it and do things of that nature. But what we're going to do is two things today. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this disk here go from 149 right 140 160 gig into three terabyte and make this a three terabyte raid one set once that's complete then the rest of these disk trays here i've got three terabyte drives in here and we're going to set them all up together get them working as a raid five set and you'll see in the video how we can actually do change that it allows us uh, the uh, dsm actually allows us to change uh, the raid type which is a really handy feature so let's take a look here uh, just a quick reminder, we're dealing with uh, this particular unit, the Synology Disk Station DS1621+. Plus. Uh, it has a lag group on the 10 gig network, and then it has this back end network, and that's where we're going to be coming up through is through a management PC, which is the Synology PC right here. We're going to be coming up through this network and using it that way. Um, we'll be able to get in there and uh, make all the adjustments we need to via the management network. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing that process. Okay, so we're going to go into its web interface and sign in. There it goes. Mr. Password, done. So slick. All right. And then we're going to go into Storage Manager to get things started. Okay. Now, I've already inserted uh, one of the disks, disk 3, but you can see it's not highlighted in any way. Right. And we can see also here below that there are smart tests that it realizes that those three drives are smart ready. Okay, that's kind of nice. And if we click on the drive, it actually takes us down to the hard disks and SSDs. You can see right here, it's not initialized. It's just kind of in the system. Same with these two cache devices. We haven't enabled those yet, but we will. We'll get there. It's just a matter of time. All right, we play around with it. We break things. We tear things apart. You know, we just kind of, you know, mess around with it and figure it out. So uh, first thing we want to do is this RAID 1 set, this uh, particular volume here, has a 160 gig disk. We're going to replace this disk and allow it to rebuild. Once it's rebuilt, then we're going to go ahead and actually expand that unit. So let's do that first. So the first thing we want to do is let's go and just look at the details here. All right? We can see there's the two disks in this RAID 1, uh, RAID 1 set. All right? The volume information is down here. That's the actual kind of space you could say, right? It's ready to go. Everything's healthy, which is good. And now we're going to break it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this disk first, this 149 gig disk out of the system. I'm going to replace it with a 2.7 and then reinsert it. And when I do that, we'll come back and we'll see it starting to rebuild. It'll take it quite a bit of time to do its rebuild. But once it's done, then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how we're going to change this RAID set from RAID 1 to RAID 5. All right. And you can hear it beeping now at me. I might have heard it there. And it got an alert saying, hey, degraded, help me. <laughs> I'm having trouble. I lost my disk. <laughs> so drive one's gone. And you can see right now it's uh, it only has that 2.7 disk. And it's going to continue to beep at me unless I do something about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick another disk back in its slot. And we'll rebuild that RAID set and go from there. So hang tight. All right, and a notification just popped up that it detected. It went off there a little quick. Sorry about that. <laughs> it just detected that new disk, right? And it's uh, ready to go. So now all we got to do is repair this. So it basically tells us, hey, the storage pool has degraded. Please check your uh, Synology NAS. It contains unused drive. Install a new drive. There is any, et cetera, et cetera. Use this article. Click the double uh, click here, repair, or just simply click repair now, which we're going to do. OK, so now we can see here it gives us two choices. Drive three is that drive that we don't want to use yet. But drive one is the drive we do want to use for now. OK, and there it goes. Please note the following uh, regarding the selected drive is not on the compatibility list. Now, Synology is uh, really good about letting users know that what disks are on the compatibility list and what disks are not. And, and that's not a bad thing at all. They just want to make sure you you have a good experience. Now, I'm using just some 
cheap SATA discs that I had that I bought on eBay uh, just to do this testing. So I really didn't get into getting the compatible drives, but you can. I mean, if you want to get into that and you're really into having a supported, fully supported system, definitely get those. All right, let's get this continued here. Okay, we're gonna expand that volume. Uh, it knows that it's gonna be increased from what it was like 140, 49 gig before. Now it's gonna go up to 2.7 terabyte. We click next. Okay, there's the summary. And it's in a fast repair mode, so we'll see how fast that actually goes. All the data on the drive will be erased. Are you sure? You bet. All right. And it's starting to go through its repair mode. I'm going to go ahead and let it do its magic. And when it's all done and we're back to 100% repairing, uh, we'll uh, see where it's at and we'll go from there. All right. So we're a few minutes in. Uh, it's about five and a half, five and a third percent done. One thing I wanted to point out, if you notice how this is going to change, you can see the used space is about 470 meg. There's nothing on this drive. It's blank for the most part, right? Um, and then 138 gig is the actual volume. So once this is completed, we should see this jump up into the two and a half or so terabyte range uh, when it's done. So keep an eye out for that. We'll let this uh, continue to uh, do its fast repair. <laughs> and then we'll uh, I'll follow up with you here when it's all completed. All right, folks, and we're back. So the expansion of the RAID group uh, has gone well. Uh, as you can see from the, uh, the screenshot here, we've got those two drives. Uh, they are now uh, the kind of the replication and, and setup is all completed and done, right? And now we can see that our uh, expansion of this particular volume is at uh, 2.6 terabyte with a little bit of overhead. Reminder, there's no data on here, so there's nothing really to replicate. These are just blank disks at this time. So what we've done is we've uh, replaced that 160 gig drive with a 2.7. These resynced and we expanded it, uh, no downtime, which is a really great feature. Now, the next thing we want to do is I want to change this uh, RAID 1 set into a RAID 5 set. And the way I do that is I got to work with the storage pool, not necessarily the volume. The volume is all about the overall space and the pool is all about the disks. So what we'll do is go to these Eclipse dots over here and we say change RAID type. When we change the RAID type, now we can choose which one we want to use. In this case, we're going to choose RAID 5. It tells us there's a minimum of three drive minimum and uh, one drive for fault tolerance, right? Okay. One, one of those drives is for fault tolerance, we should say. <laughs> okay. So let's hit next here. And as you can see, I've got uh, several other drives, extra drives in here. As you know, drive one and two are already in use on that uh, storage pool, and we're going to add these drives um, so I'm going to go ahead and click those in, choose those drives, and you can see it's going to expand estimated uh, capacities now going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 14 terabyte, give or take, you know, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and click next. It's going to say, hey, please note, uh, these drives, uh, you're going to have some problems. In fact, uh, this drive here, number four, contains bad sectors. So this is a good, good check. We should probably go back and now check this drive and see what's going on with it. Yes, this was planned. Sorry. Wanted to show you some of the good features that Synology has around checking out their disks. And I inserted a bad drive intentionally just to see how it would react. And as you could see right there, it pegged it. Good job, Synology. All right. So with bad, uh, <laughs> excuse me, with uh, drive four having some bad sectors, let's go take a look at this and see what we can find out. So let's hit cancel. And we're going to exit out of this. We're going to go into the hard disks and we're going to look at drive four. Drive four is expanded. And as you can see, it has a sec bad sector count of 61. But we don't see that on other drives such as drive three here if we expand it. Okay. No bad sector count. Looking good. Okay. And so on. As well as five. And drive six was the other drive we're working with no bad sectors. So we're going to run some health checks on these drives before we go ahead and introduce them into the RAID set. Probably a best practice, right? <laughs> so we'll start with drive four first, then we'll go through the rest. So I'm going to click on drive four. We're going to go to health info 
and what, give it a chance to run. It says, hey, look, there's your bad sector count. And it gives a little, uh, uh, little bit of information on it. Now, Smart's reporting this in, and we're going to want to run a, a test. So let's click on Smart. Okay. We can see we can run a quick test, which is a basic diagnostic test performed to detect mechanical and electronic errors. Uh, an extended test, the entire drive will be scanned to ensure more accurate results. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run an extended test on this particular drive, being that it's uh, showing that it does have bad sectors. And then we'll run extended tests on the other drives, make sure they're stable, and then we'll uh, come back. But first, let's go ahead and get this one started. Okay, so it's going to take quite a bit of time <laughs> for these drives to do it. They're estimating at about uh, 460 hours or approximately eight hours of time to do. So let's get it rolling. We'll get it started here. And it's progressing right along right there. We could stop it if it goes if we need to, but I'm going to let this one finish up. So I'll finish up checking the rest of the drives, get them all in a healthy state, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, move that RAID group forward. All right, and we're back a few days later. <laughs> it took about eight hours for those uh, drives to run their extended test, and they came back uh, okay. All of them are showing healthy, but if you do notice this one drive four here still showing that bad sector count. Now, this is a personal decision. If I was running a production environment, uh, I would definitely choose not to cho use this drive, right? Uh, and I totally accept that. I would, I would move it out. I'd put a clean drive in that's going to come back with no bad sectors because I know it won't give me any troubles. But this is a development, uh, a development environment, a home lab. I'm not too worried about it. I, I could probably... Uh, uh, you know, replace the drive I wanted to. I don't have a disc right now, but what I could do is uh, set up uh, scans of it and monitor it. And that's probably what I'll do in another quick, uh, quick NAS thing is setting up monitoring. But for now, we're going to leave it be. We're going to let it go. We'll keep track of it. I think it'll uh, add some spice to this home lab as it uh, <laughs> moves forward. So let's go ahead and get that uh, RAID set expanded again. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on the storage pool. Okay. And back over into that change RAID type again where we were. We're going to move this to 5. Click on Next. We're going to choose all our drives. Click on Next. Word of warning. HCL drives important. Contains bad sectors. Be aware. We ran those tests. We should be good to go. We click on contain or, uh, Continue. We hit the Expand the Capacity to about 13.6, 13.5 terabytes, give or take. And we click Next. Okay. We finish it up click apply. It's going to erase all the, the information off the drives, which is fine. And away it goes. All right, there it goes. So now it's initializing the RAID type and drives and getting it moving forward. Folks, this is going to take several hours to finish up. We're going to wrap up this video now. Uh, in this video, we went through a lot of different things, <laughs> more than I expected for a quick NAS, but we got a lot of great information in on how to expand that RAID pool from a RAID 1 into a RAID 5, and then we also covered some of the health checks and different things to look at. So I hope you found this uh, quick uh, NAS topic helpful. Uh, if you did, you know, please uh, leave me a comment below if you have any questions. Would love to hear from you, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.